So earlier we spoke about the concept of the kinetic theory of ideal gases. And what this guy is, is basically a bunch of assumptions made by scientists to help us explain how gases function and how they behave. They help us develop a better understanding of gas functionality. Now, one thing that we deduced from the kinetic theory was that kinetic energy of any molecule is directly proportional to temperature. And that means if we have a gas system, a system of gas molecules, if we increase the overall temperature of our system, then on average every molecule will have a higher kinetic energy. And that's because kinetic energy is proportional to temperature. So what happens in a system of gas molecules that is under constant temperature? Well then on average, the kinetic energy of any gas molecule, say gas molecule 1, is the same as the kinetic energy of gas molecule number 2. So let's equate these guys and let's see where that leads us. Let's suppose the kinetic energy of some gas molecule 1 is equal to kinetic energy of gas molecule 2 because they have the same temperature. Now let's also assume that gas molecule 2 has a larger mass than gas molecule 1. So gas molecule 2 is heavier. So let's rewrite these guys in terms of our mathematical formula for kinetic energy, namely 1 half mv squared. The 1 sub subscript simply represents gas molecule 1 and the 2 subscript simply represents gas molecule 2. So blue is 1, red is 2. So 1 half m1 v1 squared is equal to 1 half m2 v2 squared. So let's cancel out the 2's by multiplying each side by 2. And, th and then let's bring our v2 over and our m1 over this way. So we want velocities on the left side and masses on the right side. We get the following formula. v1 squared divided by v2 squared equals m2 squared over m1 squared. And finally, let's take the square root of both sides. What we get is these twos cancel. We're left with v1 over v2. And then we have the square root of m2 divided by square root of m1. Now, what does this tell us? Well, to gain a better understanding about what this tells us, we have to talk about a concept called effusion. But before we talk about, about that, notice that velocity 1 will, will be greater if m1 is smaller. And likewise, velocity 2 will be greater if m2 is smaller. And we'll see that more clearly in the process of infusion. Effusion. So effusion is the movement of gas particles or molecules from high pressure to low pressure via a very, very tiny hole. So to imagine this situation, let's look at this illustration. Suppose we have a system, a cube, and we have a very tiny hole in this cube. And we have lots of molecules found inside our cube. So we have two molecules, the red molecules and the blue molecules. Now notice we have a high pressure on the inside and low pressure on the outside because our outside we're assuming is a vacuum. Now we make a very tiny incision, a very tiny hole, and this, the diameter of this hole is much smaller than the distance between any two molecules. That's our assumption. So eventually some of these molecules will hit the walls of the container. And at any given time, some of these molecules will hit the wall at exactly the spot where this hole is. And they will exit or escape the cube. What this formula tells us is that the higher your velocity is, the more likely that you will collide with the wall at this position, at this point in time, and the more likely you will escape into the vacuum. So we can rewrite these velocities as rates. So the rate of effusion for gas 1 divided by the rate of effusion for gas 2 is equal to the square root of mass 1 divided by the square root of mass 2. And what this uh, equation tells us, which is by the way Graham's equation or Graham's law, is that the, the heavier the molecule is, the smaller its speed and therefore the smaller its rate. And our individual proportion is the following. Rate is directly proportional to 1 over square root of mass. 
In other words, if our m is larger, then the denominator becomes larger, and so our fraction becomes smaller, and so this guy is smaller. Likewise, if, if m is smaller, if it's less heavier, then this fraction becomes smaller, and 1 over a smaller number is a larger number. And that means our rate is larger. In other words, the higher the speed, the more likely you will collide with the walls, the more likely you will exit the cell. And the only way that your speed will be higher in this equation is if your mass is smaller. So lighter particles tend to effuse quicker than heavier particles.